Hello, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, we'll be solving the Jam CPT past question for the subject Physics the Year 2021. Do not go anywhere, stay with us and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel and right here we are going to solve questions 1 to 20. So let's start with question 1. The slope of the straight line displacement time graph indicates what? Alright, so we have displacement against time. Alright, that is for velocity. When it is speed, you talk about distance against time. Alright, so um, right there for the slope of the straight line, we are talking about equal displacement regarding equal time interval right so that should amount to your uniform velocity or constant velocity so the correct option here is option b for uniform velocity question two a man will exert the greatest pressure when he does what okay so when it comes to the concept of pressure you know we have pressure as um force over area equals force over area right as a scalar quantity all right so in that sense we should note that the less the area the more pressure exerted by a constant force okay this is what i mean so imagine if the force is actually 10 newton and the area is 2 10 divided by 2 that gives you 5 isn't it so but let's now increase the area okay maintaining that same constant force so let's say the force is still 10 now the area is 5 so 10 divided by 5 that tells you 2 so you can see that the less the area the more the pressure exerted by that force okay so um, how do we apply this um, distribution or this concept to what we have here so let's see when uh, when he lies flat on his back so lying flat on his back actually increases the area isn't it so that we reduce the amount of pressure exerted so if he lies on his belly as well you can see we have much area available so that will reduce the pressure okay so if he stands on both feet okay, standing on both feet we actually have um, higher impacts regarding pressure compared to the first two but let's see if we can have more pressure okay so when he stands on the toes of one of his foot on the toes of one of his foot so that tells you that he's just standing on just one toe you can see the area is so small and the force still remains the same so where the area is small what do you expect you are going to see that the pressure will be the greatest at that point so you can compare how your needles okay maybe from your syringe or something can easily pierce your skin compared to using a tonic stick trying to pierce your skin so you can see uh, when the area is very small okay the pressure exerted high okay so option d is the right option three which of the units of the following physical quantities are derived okay so we have fundamental quantities and we have derived quantities okay so derived quantities you actually get them from the combo of two fundamental quantities or two different quantities to put all right so if you consider the quantity supplied okay so let me just give us this back end um, usage okay so if you have your fundamental quantities the basics of yeah the fundamental quantities are mass length time temperature amount of substance and electric um yeah electric current that's measured in appear so i have already me mentioned mass as one of the quantities regarding fundamental quantities so you should know that every other thing presented here they are derived quantities okay so which combo that we have here are derived so that should be area that should be trust that should be pressure because if you look at pressure right we're talking about force and area so you can see two quantities brought together all right so the correct option now should contain i i i i i i okay so where do we have that combo very well i think we have that yeah option b so option b is a valid option question four a ball of mass 0 0.5 kg moving at 10 meter per second collides with another ball of equal mass at rest if the two balls 
move off together after the impact, calculate their common velocity. Okay, so this concept actually relates in elastic collision, right? So the bodies stick together, and right there we can tell that they have common velocity. So we're just going to use, um, regarding this um, conservation of linear momentum, right? We have our mass, m1, right, times the velocity, right? Then the other mass and its velocity, which is equal to, now we have a common velocity, isn't it? Mass 1 plus mass 2, right? Then they are common velocity. So that is V1 and V equals V2, right? The velocity of the first mass and the velocity of the second mass are actually the same. So we are told that a ball of mass is 0.5 kg, okay? So M1, that's 0.5 kg, moving at 10 meter per second, right? Then we have another ball of equal mass. So that means the other ball has equal mass of 0 0.5, right? We are told at rest, at rest that is zero. Initial velocity that is zero, right? Equals, since they have equal masses, right? We have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So we have to find their common velocity. Okay, so I have 0 0.5 times 10, that should give me five plus 0, because 0 0.5 times 0, that is 0. So 5 plus 0 is still 5, typically. So let's just make that rest. Okay. So I have equals 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. That is actually 1, right? So 1 times V, that is still V, right? So their common velocity is actually 5 meter per second, okay? You can see some expression like this, or you can see it this way, meter per second. So I raise to power minus 1. So you see the same, the unit is good to go. So we have five meter per second. So let's go back to the screen to sort out 5.05 meter per square second. Okay, so we have that in option C. So option C is the appropriate answer. Five, the motion of a body is simple harmonic if the what happens. Okay, so when you talk about C, uh, SHM, simple harmonic motion, of a body, you are talking about a concept that refers to the periodic motion of the body, right, along a straight line, such that the acceleration of this body, okay, is directed towards the center of the motion or towards a fixed point, right, and is also proportional to its own displacement from that point, okay. So, um, from what I've just said now, you can see the motion of a body is simple and monic if the acceleration is always directed towards a fixed point or the center of the motion, all right? So the correct concept here is presented in option A. So option A is the appropriate option. Number six, which of the following is not correct about the molecules of a substance in a gaseous state? So we can introduce the assumptions regarding the kinetic theory of gases or the postulations or whatever thing we want to refer to. So uh, let's pick out the, uh, the statement that is incorrect from here. So we have option A, they are in a constant state of motion. We know that this is one of the things that actually agree okay, with the concept regarding the kinetic theory of gases, the assumptions. Okay? Then we also know that uh, due to this uh, constant state of motions, you know, they collide with one another, they collide with the walls of the container. All right? So it, it, due to all of those um, kind of collision, you know, it results in different speed of the molecules. Okay? You see that the speed differ widely. Some will move slowly, some will move um, uh, fast. Okay? All right? Some will move slowly, while some will move very fast. All right? So you can see that their speed actually differ. Okay? We have option C. They have a temperature which is measured by the average kinetic energy. This is very correct as well. Okay? So let's look at D. Option D. Um, the collision between the gases is perfectly inelastic. This is incorrect. We know this collision is perfectly elastic. Even when they hit the walls of the container, right? They still bounce back like elastic balls. Okay, even when they even collide one another, you know, it may result in changes in the individual energies, but the collision that we have there remains perfectly elastic. So the assumption or the concept or the statement that is incorrect, right, is option D. The collision between the gases is perfectly in inelastic. So option D is a no-no. So option D is the right option for not being correct about the molecules of substance in a gaseous state. Seven, 
A given mass of gas has a pressure of 18 newton per meter square, okay, at a temperature of 47 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if the temperature is reduced to 27 degrees Celsius with volume remaining constant, the volume remains constant. Okay, so the new pressure is what? So if you just compress Charles' law, Boyce's law, and um, pressure law, I guess, okay? So when you combine these three together, what you should have, you should have this. P1 V1 over T1, right? Equals P2 V2 over T2. Okay, so, uh, but here we are told that with the volume remaining constant, so volume is actually gone, right? So I'm left with the pressure, and okay, I'm left with pressure against temperature, the pressure against temperature. Okay, so at this point now, we are given the pressure, okay, P1 as A T. Then what about T1? T1 is given as 47. So we have to convert to Kelvin state. So 47 to Kelvin state would be plus 273. And that should give me 320. Yes. Then T2 is what? T2 is gotten as... 27 degrees, so we have to convert to Kelvin scale as well. So I should have plus 273, that should be 300. Okay, I can put Kelvin, Kelvin there. Okay, so I neglected the unit. So we have to find P2. Okay, so if we are finding P2, when we cross multiply, I have P1 T2 equals P2 T1. So dividing both sides by T1, right? So this is my formula. So P2 is actually. P1, T2, right, over T1. So what is my P1? That is 80 times my T2, that is 300, over T1, 320, right? So I have 0, cancel 0, 8 year 1, 8 year 4, right? I have 4 year 1, 4 year 75. So I should have this. So, the P2, that's 75. Let's go back to the screen to point out 75. We have that. Option B. So, option B is the right option. Question 8. 0 0.5 kg of water at 10 degrees Celsius is completely converted to height at 0 degrees Celsius by extracting 88,000 joules of heat from its units, okay? So, if the specific heat capacity of water is 4,200, okay, calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. So, remember that the quantity of heat evolved, okay? For latent heat of fusion, you can say Q is actually equal to ML. This is latent heat of fusion, right? This is the mass. Or you, you also recollect that we also have this. Q equals MC change in theta, delta theta, right? So if I bring these two together, I have Q equals MC, or I can start with this ML, right? Added to MC. So I can see M is common, so I have Q equals M into bracket L, which is what we are looking for. I can put LF, or I can just use the M, then I have C delta theta. So, quantity of it involved, we have 88,000, right, equals the mass, which is 0 0.5. Open your bracket, this is what we are looking for, LF or L, and then is of fusion, okay. Added to the specific capacity of water, we know it's 4,200, isn't it? Okay, then I have times, change in temperature, we know it is, we are, we are dealing with 10 degrees and 0 degrees, so 10 minus 0, that is actually 10. Right, so I have this involved. Okay, so from here I can first divide both sides by 0 0.5. So if I divide 88,000 by 0 0.5, what I should have is 176,000. Okay, because I know 0 0.5, if I want to convert to fraction, right, I have this is 1, I have 5 over 10, isn't it? 5 year 1, 5 year 2. So I have 1 over 2. So that means I'm saying 88,000, right? Divided by 1 over 2. Or I'm saying 88,000 times 2 over 1. So times this. This is what I got. So this is just for situations whereby you don't have access to calculator. So you still know what to do. Okay, so we have this equals, when you open up, LF plus 4,200 times 10, I have 42,000. Right, so 
if I send this to this side, so what I should have is 176,000, right? Minus 42,000 equals latent heat of fusion. So if I subtract this, what I should have is 134. 6 minus 2, that is 4. 7 minus 4, that is 3. Then I have 1. Then the 3, 0. 1, 3, 4. Right? Or I can say 1, yeah, I can say 13. Yeah, I can say 134 kg. Right? 134 kilo, whatever unit we want to put for our latent into a fusion. So either using 134 k, that's kilo, which is times 1,000, or 134,000 joules, um, kilo joules, right, per kilogram. Okay. So we have it there. So if you scan through the options provided, you will see that we have uh, the well-defined similarity. Option C. So option C is good to go. Option C is the right answer. Kindly have more practice time using our Jam CBT tools. All you just need to do is to click on the link that's going to take you to the My School website. Okay, right there. You get to download the My School mobile app on your Android devices. Or you can check out our my school software for your laptops okay so join me as i solve question nine which of the following instruments may be used to measure relative humidity okay so relative humidity that is actually agrometer some with high humidity or relative humidity agrometer is good to go that is so the right option is ag agrometer option c let's look at option a agrometer we're talking about density of liquids all right, so uh, manometer, you want to measure the pressure of a gas, okay, in a container, yeah, in a container to put. Then we have hypsometer, maybe height, elevation, and the light. So I'm just talking about the basics, right? So the right option here is option C for hygrometer. Please do not forget that all you need to do is to just encourage us by hitting that like button, also clicking on the subscribe button, and always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video content. 10. A source of sound produces waves in air of wavelength 1.65 meters. If the speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second, okay, so the period of vibration in air is what? Okay, so we can actually go straight uh, to the formula using wave period equals wavelength over the speed or the velocity as you want to put ball. Let's see how we derive this formula. So remember we have that uh, frequency equals 1 over t, right? This is the period t that we are looking at. So, and we recall again that v equals f lambda frequency times wavelength, right? So where your f is actually 1 over t, so that implies that v equals 1 over t times wavelength, right? That means v equals wavelength right over t so right now we are looking for the wave period which is t if we cross multiply we have vt equals the wavelength isn't it so sorry i'm writing this as pi so if you divide both sides by v so that means t equals the wavelength right over v do we see that so that's why i said wave period is actually equals to wave uh, wavelength over the velocity of speed Okay, so we are given the wavelength as 1.65, then the speed is actually 330. Okay, so if we divide, we should have 0 0.005 seconds, right? So if you want to do this with our calculator, we know 1.65, actually 1.65, you know, that we have 100, that is 165, right, over 100, okay, divided by... Um, 330 over 1 so that implies 165 okay over 100 times 1 over 330 okay this this are just scenarios in case you don't have access to calculator your calculator basis up right so i have 165 here 1 165 here equals here 2 so basically i have 1 over 200 okay so 1 over 200 i know that 1 over 200 is actually 0 0.005 because I know that 1 over 2 is 0 0.5, okay? So we see, we see how this is 1 over 2. So 1 over 2, we still have two zeros left. Then I just put the two zeros like this. Okay, so this is the concept behind it. So you are good to go with or without calculator. With calculator, it's faster and more accurate. So let's go back to the screen to secure 0 0.005. Option B, so option B is your appropriate option. Number 11. A boy standing some distance from the foot of a tall cliff 
claps its ends and hears an echo 0.5 second later. If the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, how far is E from the cliff? So we recall that the speed, right, right, that is distance over time. But right now we're talking about the distance that actually involve forth and back. Okay, so that would be two distances, right? So that should be V equals D over time. Now we know that velocity is quite different from speed, right? Velocity is actually displacement over time because displacement is distance traveled in a specified direction. Okay, that's just a side information, okay? Just for an addition. Okay, so we have the speed, right? It's distance over time. But right now we are talking about the sound traveling forth and reflecting back. Concept of echo, right? So it's going to be distance going and distance coming. That's how many distances we have two. So this is 2D over 2, right? So we are asked to find how far is E from the cliff. So that is the distance we're talking about. So when we cross multiply, I know that my 2D is actually VT. So dividing both sides by 2, right? So I should have my D equals VT over 2, which is actually, my V, the speed is actually 340, okay, times the T, the time that is 0 0.5, right? That is 1 over 2, or 0 0.5 over 2. Isn't it? So if I have 2 year 1, 0 0.5 times this is actually, um, is, yeah, that should be 170. Yeah, 170. 170, very well. Okay, so oh, I can say half. That's what I like to use. So 0 0.5 times this is 170. 2 year 1, 2 year, 2 in 170, that should give me 85. Yes, very well. Because 2 in 17, we go 8 times remaining 1. 2 in 10, that is 5. Okay, so we have 85 meters okay so let's go back to the screen to secure the correct option all right we have that package option d so option d is the correct option question 12 which of the following is not a vector quantity so when you talk about vector quantities we're talking about quantities where you can refer to magnitude as well as direction so there's magnitude there's direction right so when it comes to scalar quantity, you're talking about a uh, concept where there is magnitude but no direction. So if you look at all of these options, right, temperature is a scalar quantity. Okay, there is magnitude, there is impact. You can feel it, but there's no particular direction, right? So if you look at momentum, you're talking about product of um, mass times velocity. Do you see that now? So force, mass times acceleration. Mass is a scalar quantity, right? You can you know the magnitude. You can tell magnitude, but there are no direction, right? So when you come to displacement, that is um, distance traveled in a specified or a specific direction. So you can see magnitude and direction, magnitude and direction, magnitude and direction, magnitude and direction, temperature. That is a scalar quantity so option c is the right option 13 calculate the heat energy required to vaporize 50 grams of water initially at 80 degrees celsius if the specific heat capacity of water is 4.23 joules right per gram per kelvin right so normally you should have it in joules per kilojoules uh, per kilogram right per kelvin this should be kilogram Right, but you can see that the units we have here is in gram, we have here in gram. Okay, so then we have specific specific latent heat of vaporization of water is given as 2260 joules per gram, right? It's supposed to be joules per kilogram. So you can see that the units they are actually in the same uh, concept. So we have grams, not kilograms, we have grams, we have kilograms, we have grams. So there's no need of converting. On a regular, we should have converted from the grams to kilograms, right? So right, this we can work with the value supplied. And you should know that the specific heat capacity of water is actually 4,200, right? Joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So but right here, we are going to work with the values supplied. Okay, so I have the quantity of heat involved, right? I have MC delta theta, that is change in temperature, okay, plus this times, the mass times latent heat of vaporization, right? So I can see that mass is common, so I have mass into brackets, specific latent heat, that is 4.23, right, times the temperature, that is 80, plus, you now we have the mass outside, so I'm having the latent heat of vaporization, that is giving us 2260, 
right? So the mass is given as 50, so I should change this to 50. So if I just 4.23 4, uh, 4 times 80 plus 2260 times 50, everything should just amount to 129920. Okay, if we approximate this, okay, we should bring it roughly to, yeah, yes, let's say 130,000 joules. So we can say 130 kilojoules, but since we have been working without the kilo, so let's just stick with this, 130,000 joules. So let's go back to the screen, the quantity of it, you know, we measure this in joules. So we have option D, so option D is the right option. 14. In a series RLC circuit at resonance, at resonance, okay, the emphasis there, the voltages across the resistor and the inductors are 30 volts and 40 volts respectively. What is the voltage across the capacitor? Even if you carry out the solving and the likes, okay, so you should just know this, at resonance, you know, when you talk about at resonance, you are talking about that um, point or that concept whereby you obtain the maximum current, right, from a circuit. Okay, so and then at resonance, you should know that your inductive reactance equals your capacitive reactance. So if the inductor has the value of 40 volts, definitely the capacitor should carry 40 volts. All right, that frequency where this occurs is referred to as a resonance frequency as well. So right there at resonance, this alters everything we're supposed to do. Okay, so at resonance, this inductor capacitor same value so if inductor is 40 volts then capacitor we're talking about 40 volts so option b is the correct option 15. if the frequency of an emitted x-ray is 1.6 times 10 raised to power 16 as okay the acceleration potential is what so you just have to recall this formula you know you are going to use this equals EV. This is what we are looking for, right? So, you recall that sometimes you see this HF is given to you like this, you know, F, you remember that V equals F lambda, right? This V in this time, we can change it to C so that we will not confuse it with this V. I'm just trying to do a side track, right? So, we have this. So, the frequency would now be C, frequency equals C over lambda. That's why you cannot see this formula sometimes as h c over lambda right equals ev do you see that but we don't need to do all of this okay i'm just trying to explain the concept so sometimes when you see h c over lambda um equals ev equals hf or hf equals h c over lambda, depending on the values supplied okay so right there i think we are good to go so we don't need this so we are just going to work with this so the energy impacted by the acceleration system this is where we are going to search for the accelerating potential right so that will be v equals hf over e right so we have our Planck's constant as um 6.63 times 10 raised to power minus 64 6.6 .6 times 10 raised to power 6.63 yeah times 10 raised to power minus 34 right times the frequency Okay, of the emitted x-ray that is given as 1.6 times 10 raised to power 16 1.6 times 10 raised to power 16 then over e we have e is given as 1.6 times 10 raised to power minus 19 so basically if you look at this 19 please so this is gone right so i have 6.63 right times 10 raised to power minus 34 right I have times 10 raised to power 16, right? Then I have times 10 raised to power, you know, we have the minus coming from here. So this will be minus into bracket minus 19, isn't it? So if we pull all this together, we have 6.63 times 10 raised to power minus 34, right? Times change this to plus 16. Minus times minus, that is plus 19, right? So 16 plus 19, that is 35. 35 minus 34, that is 1. So I have 6.63 times 10 raised to the power 1, right? Or I can have it as 60. If I move the decimal point to 1, that is 66.3, right? So this should be my answer. Either 6.63 times 10 raised to the power 1 or 10, or 6.6, 66.3. So let's go for 66.3. 
to look carefully, you can see the figures are properly mixed, okay? But we are hunting for the right answer. So we can find that in option C. So option C is the appropriate solution. The fraction of the atoms of a radioactive material left after 120 years is 1 over 64. Okay, so what is the half-life of the material? So we can just recall that the fraction left, right? We can use this to represent the fraction left equals this. Alright, so how do I get this very easy? We are told that we have 1 over 64, right? 1 over 64 actually means 2 raised to the power 6, isn't it? Because 2 times 2, 4, 4 times 2, 8, 8 times 2, 16, 16 times 2, that is 32, 32 times 2, that is 64. So we can see that is it. So you can see this looks alike. So this is the number of the half life, isn't it? So we've gotten this, we sorted this out. So remember that our half life. Right, equals the number of years we have 120 years, right, over the number of the half life which we got as six. We see that so we have six year one, we have six year 20. So, 20. Let's go back to the screen to get the correct value. Okay, the option with the correct value. So, we have that in option B. So, option B is the right option. 17. A certain radioactive source emits radiation that was found to be deflected by both magnetic and electric fields. The radiation is simply beta particles or beta rays, okay? Because you know that beta rays, both the magnetic and the electrostatic field actually affect it. So, you know, in a, in, yeah, even for instance, in electrostatic field, you know, it's deflected towards the positive plate. You will see it's well, it's well distinct or quite marked, right? Gamma rays, X-rays, these are electromagnetic waves, okay? So, it's a no-no. So, this is what is actually affected. Even alpha rays, too, they're affected when it comes to even the, elect um, the electric field, electrostatic field. Okay, so if, if I had alpha rays and beta rays, I would have, have some kind of competition or distinction to be done. Okay, so beta rays, that is the correct option. So option A is very valid. Please be reminded that all of our platforms are always open for you to ask your questions and get them well answered. All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the MySchool website. So right there you get to interact with our solution providers where all of your questions will be well treated. So join me as a of question 18. So the inner diameter of a test tube can be measured accurately using a pair of vernier calipers. You know, the internal, the external diameter of a test tube, this is where it comes in, diameter of a rod, of course. This as well, micrometer screw gauge, you can talk about that. maybe, uh, yeah, thickness of a paper, right, diameter of a wire. Okay, so pair of the uh, dividers, we are looking at um, geometrical operations. Okay, so meter row, you know, length, that's a straightforward. So option D is the right option. In case you have steps or you have solutions you'd like to share, please, we are so much interested. All you just need to do is to kindly use the comment section below, indicate the question number and the solution or explanation you'd like to share. 19. Two bodies have masses in the ratio 3 ratio 1. They experience forces which impact to them acceleration in the ratio 2 ratio 9 respectively. Okay, so find the ratio of forces, the masses experienced. Okay, so we can tell that for the masses, you know, we have mass 1, then mass 2. We have it in 3 ratio 1, right? Then for the acceleration, we have it in, this is A1, A2, we have it in 2 ratio 9, isn't it? So I can decide to say, okay, for my F1, that is mass times acceleration, which is 3 times 2, that is 6. For my F2, that is mass times acceleration, which is 1 times 9, that is 9. Okay, so the ratio will be 6 ratio 9, isn't it? Which is, 6 ratio 9 is actually 6 over 9. This is 3 year 2, 3 year 3. So that is 2 over 3 or 2 ratio 3. Or I can still do it this way as well. I can say my force is actually equals mass times acceleration. We know we have 3 ratio 1. 3 ratio 1 is actually 3 over 1 times the acceleration 2 ratio 9 which is 2 over 9 all right so i think this is shorter 3 year 1 3 year 3 1 times 2 i have 2 1 times 3 i have 3 so we have 3 over 2 over 3 or 2 ratio 3 which method works for you very well so 2 ratio 3 2 over 3 
Okay, we have that in option C, so option C is the right option. Question 20. Particles of mass 10 raised to the power minus 2 kg kilogram is fixed to the tip of a fan blade which rotates with, with angular velocity of 100 radians. Okay, so if the radius of the blade is 0.2 meters, the centripetal force is what? So, centripetal force, I can use this to represent it, right? Centripetal force equals mv squared over r, right? Where our v is actually radius times the angular velocity so that will be ft right equals m times this which to power 2 over r which means m right times r angular velocity times this isn't it over r we see that right so this strikes out this so i should have my centripetal force as m angular velocity that is times 2 isn't it which to power 2 then i have this radius so what is the mass that we are giving? 10 raised to the power minus 2, okay, times the angular velocity, that's 100, that is 100 raised to the power 2, right? 100 raised to the power 2, that is actually um, 10,000, I guess, yes. 100 raised to the power 2, that's 10,000, right, times the radius, we are giving the radius 0 0.2. So 0 0.2, that is actually 0 0.2, that is 2 over 10 right that's actually 2 over 10 okay 2 over 10 now i can have it as so i have times 0 0.2 whichever thing we want to do so this is basically 10 raised to the power minus 2 right times 10 raised to the power 4 because this this is 100 raised to the power 2 or let me just say 10 raised to the power minus 2 isn't it this implies let me just make it into this this implies 1 over 10 raised to the power 2 which is 100 10 raised to the power 2 that's 10 times 10 that's 100 times this is how many zeros that we 1 2 3 4 right 100 times 100 that is actually 10,000 over 1 right times 0 0.2 okay so 0 cancels 0 0 cancels 0 so I have 100 times 0 0.2 that should give me 20 yes 20 okay so we have 20 centripetal force is actually 20 newtons so let's go back to the screen to pick 20 newtons so we have that attached to option b so option b is a valid option we've come to the end of this video session but there are definitely more video lessons to come what you just need to do is to hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video lesson just for you